Namaste everybody. Today I wanted to talk about gender affirming care. This is a newer model of therapeutic treatment that is seemingly all pervasive these days throughout all of the medical establishment, the mental health world, um, schools, school boards, teachers, and um, school social workers and therapists. Um, it's just everywhere. And it's this idea that whatever someone says their gender or sexual identity is, you affirm it immediately. Now, um, the proponents of this gender affirming care model say that um, we do this, or this is because we need to be compassionate, sympathetic, empathetic um, towards transsexual people or towards transgender people um, and not question their identity. We just need whatever they tell us, we need to take them at their word. And, you know, in some areas of life, um, I can see how that's a valid approach um, and you might want to do that. But when it comes to the medical world, um, yeah, we can't be doing that. <laughs> I don't like that. Um, and especially, especially when it comes to children. No, no, no. We can't have the gender affirming care models with kids. I don't like this. Um, it's reckless. It's nightmarish. It's dangerous. And it's ruining a lot of people's lives. And I can't believe how many people are just going along with it. So, um, there's an argument to be made for informed consent clinics and gender affirming care and all of that for adults. That's another argument, but my concern is for the kids. Um, I could care less for the most part about, you know, whatever way that someone wants to use or abuse themselves. <laughs> I, I don't have time to worry about it. Um, but with the kids and with minors, it really it deeply concerns me to the point where it's like I have to, I am a deeply introverted person, but I feel like the one thing I can do is just use my voice as a transsexual person to be like, no, we can't do this. I don't support this. And like, just put my opinion out on YouTube and hope a couple people will see it because I don't know what else to do. Um, but yeah, this is, this is terrible that you would just accept whatever someone says to you, especially a child in regards to gender or sex, and then put them on a medicalized road towards hormones and surgery. Now, it used to be that, and, and in most places in the world, <laughs> it's, it's like mostly the Americans and the Europeans have lost their minds on this you know, for the most part. And I hear the way that it's dealt with in other parts of the world is like how we used to deal with things with transgender people here in America 15, 20 years ago. Like when I transitioned, it's still, you, you still had to go through therapy for a year. Um, you had to live as like the actual, like, at, like live as a woman and all of these things before you could get like two letters written before you could get hormones and like surgery and stuff. So you had to like, get approved of like a gold, you know, stamped that like you are indeed trans before you can medical, uh, medically transition. Now, again, there are pros and cons to that. And I'm not saying everybody should ha have to do the things that I did or, or go through the experiences that I went through because there are good aspects of that, but there are negative aspects of that too. But what I don't like is that all of that, all of that safe, safekeeping and the safeguards have been thrown out the window, you know, because you would use that year, in some places it was two or three years, to explore, could this person's identity be informed maybe by bipolar or multiple personality or some kind of manic condition or other mental health um, condition? Um, because actual transsexualism is like very, 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 very small um, amount of the population. So it's very rare that you will actually find a transsexual person and they need to like transition and stuff. A lot of times someone will be dealing with um, sexual assault. They'll uh, be dealing with past traumas, unresolved traumas, dealing with, again, some other mental health um, comorbidity. So all of those things need to be explored before allowing someone to transition, especially, uh, especially if it's a child, which 
I just made a video on my thoughts on children transitioning. That's another topic. So go watch that video if you want to hear my uh, opinions on kids in transition. But it's just, yeah, it's just crazy that you had all of these steps and safeguards in place for so many years so that the wrong people wouldn't transition and then end up regretting it. And then we have have to detransition them. And that's what, when, like when I transitioned years ago, you didn't, because it's been what, 14 years now, I think now or something like that, 14, 15 years, somewhere around there. It was a different world. <coughs> Um, it was it was a really different world back then, um, and you didn't hear about detransitioners because there were all of these steps you had to go through, um, and like if you were just dealing with you know SA or unresolved trauma or bipolar, like it would you would get caught in the system and then you would get treated for that, and then it's like oh well maybe you know we worked on that and oh I don't actually need to transition, or even if someone maybe is transgender or transsexual, they can at least use that time to realize like, oh, actually I don't need to medically transition. Like all I need to do was change my hair and change my pronouns and like that's enough because it seems like that's when people transition these days, all they do is they, them and the, their Twitter bio and like shave half their head and get a septum piercing and that's like their transition these days. But for a serious medical transition, um, there should be, if, if, you know, again, these proponents of gender affirming care say it's because out of, you know, sympathy and compassion for trans people, if they really had the sympathy, compassion, the professionalism, the ethics, they would take the time with their patients to explore everything emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, what is going on here why do you think that you're trans? Why do you need to transition? Why do you want to cross dress? Um, why do you want to engage in certain uh, sexual behaviors? Or why um, do you feel uh, repressed sexually about certain things? Why do you want to do this? Why do you, why are you afraid of that? So you have to take time to explore all of these different aspects of self. And then again, like not just you, but ideally with a counselor or a therapist or someone that can help you explore, not someone that can help you affirm, but explore and discover really what is there. Because I don't think most people really know who they are. Most people don't know what they actually think and what they actually believe and what their values are and the principles that they live their life by. Uh, most people's identity and sense of self is like informed by really superficial things like you know um gender sex or race you know um our physical material bodies and then maybe religion and politics but beyond that do people really know who they are do they really know what motivates them do they really know their their intentions behind their actions have they explored all of these different aspects of self you know if, if you're going to be pursuing, you know, profound, life-changing, permanent, you know, medical changes through hormones and surgery, like, you need to do these things. You need to explore. Um, and again, ideally not just you as in the individual, but with at least another person and a professional, if not other people and maybe other people that have been through it before and that have ended up um, happy with their transitions, but also... Uh, listening to the detransitioners de and those who have ended up very miserable um, and regretted their transition. So you need to take all these things into account before making such a big, um, big step, such a big choice. Um, so yeah, it's, um, I'll try and wrap up here. It's, I'll just say that it's funny that years ago, because um, I did LGBT activism for many years, I worked uh, very ardently educating people against conversion therapy and helping people get out of that and heal from that and that sort of thing. Um, and that's something that I nearly went through as a kid. I almost um, got sent to a conversion therapy camp program um, of sorts uh, as a kid. And then later as a teen, my parents uh, were trying to get me to go through this uh, Christian conversion therapy program. 
which is a whole other story. I could make a video on that. But it's just interesting that all those years ago that I worked very hard to help people escape that, which conversion therapy, what is it? It's not actual scientific, like scientific uh, fact-based medicine. It's ideological based, uh, religious based therapeutic model that has to do, you know, more with quack medicine and, you know, Christianity or the particular fundamentalist religion than it does with like contemporary hardcore facts. So, you know, the same eyes that I view that conversion therapy is like those silly religious, you know, quacks trying to change people's gender and sexuality. Like I see the gender affirming people like the doctors and the social workers and like the HR people that are just gender affirming care, gender affirming care. I'm like, you are the same as like, you are silly, religious, ideologically possessed people that are not professional, that are not ethical, that are not practicing um, real proper medicine. So yeah, I don't like this side of the gender affirming care model where it's like, whatever you are, let's nail that in, dig your heels in. Or the old style, you know, like conversion therapy where it's like, in the name of Jesus, you're not a homosexual. It's like, we need to meet in the middle and like, oh, that's interesting that you have these feelings, these desires, these fears, these impulses, you know, let's explore that. Um, we need more mindfulness. We need more, again, non-judgmental exploration into these things instead of just like, I am this identity and I am that identity and I need to change my body in all these ways. Like maybe, you know, maybe that is true, but we need to like, wind through, you know, this path first of like exploring all of these different dimensions and questions before we we take that final plunge. And again, there's there's an argument to be made, you know, if adults want to do that and informed consent and everything. Um, it's an interesting conversation to have. But for kids, um, yeah, it's a hard no for me. I, I it, it makes me sick that you know, a seven-year-old could just hear about like, oh, I'm a Dimmy boy. And it's like, oh, yes, Timmy. Indeed, you are a little, you know, Dimmy boy. Let's change your pronouns to they, them or whatever. It's just like, it's just so absurd. Um, so I don't like it. Um, I wish I knew what to do about it. Unfortunately, I don't have any ideas, suggestions or recommendations about solutions or what we can do because it's just this all pervasive woke plague that is like everywhere, you know? Um, so I don't know what to do about it except right now, except to speak out about it. Um, that's all I can do. Um, yeah, I wish I had more to say on, on like the solution part. Cause I am a rather pragmatic person and I don't like complaining about stuff unless I have ideas about like, you know, so maybe we can do this and this and this about it. You know, all hope isn't lost. But in this situation, I feel like all hope is lost and everybody's crazy and insane. Um, and I don't know what to do. <laughs> so, um, yeah, again, it's just, they, they say, you know, they, the, all the, the, the proponents of this gender affirming care, they say it's, you know, for people like me, sympathy, empathy, compassion for people like me, but you know, this tranny saying, not in my name, not for me. No, thank you. I don't like that gender affirming care model. This is hurting people. Um, yeah. And it's not safe. It's just not safe. Um, and especially with our kids, they deserve better. And our adults deserve better too. Everybody needs, you know, deserves to have a proper medical professional take the time that is necessary to explore these things. And everything is so quick these days. Um, especially in the West and especially in America with American medical system, that's a whole other problem, you know, but for now, yeah, I'm just, I'm speaking out against it. And I ask for you to speak out against it as well. I know people will call you a bigot. People will call you transphobic. If I have to be your token tranny, like, oh, Sahila on YouTube said, <laughs> you know, she's trans and she doesn't support this. So go ahead and use me and send them this video if you like. Um, cause I'm thinking too about like, you know, if I run into a doctor that is doing this gender affirming care, like, 
what, what would I say? What am I going to say? It's only a matter of time. So, and, and right now it's, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I would say. So I'm going to have to figure out myself. Um, I'm going to have to think more about this, about our, you know, solutions, about how to ground some of this chaos, you know, bring it down. Let's ground everybody out of the ideological madness, bring people back into reality and practice good medicine here because it's just, it's just nonsense for now. But now I'm just starting to ramble. So, okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to see you guys later. I hope this made sense and was, um, you know, somewhat like illuminating or helpful or insightful. Um, please take care of yourself. I hope you're well. Jai Shri Krishna. Bye-bye.